Hello again everybody. So after having um, received several questions on how to uh, diagnose or check if uh, the mini spot welder is working correctly without let's say damaging further the unit or risking any fire or shorts, I um, devised this simple method. At least you can check if your FETs are triggering correctly and uh, if everything is like in working order so it's pretty simple you just have to get um, a 12 volt car light bulb this one is um, from a stop about 20 watts um, you need a filament light bulb because you need to uh, you know be able to uh, draw at least a certain amount of current a couple of amps uh, to check if everything is okay so uh, if you have a smaller light bulb, uh, maybe uh, 10 watts, that's fine too. It's you know just just more or less this uh, this range between 10 and 20 watts. It's fine. Um, so what you do is simply power up your uh, welder. I'm using my uh, handy 3S pack here and. As you can see, it's set. It starts with five milliseconds. I suggest going up to twenty uh, because the filament needs a little bit of a um, time to warm up and uh, you know have a, a small flash. So, with my setup, twenty twenty is is enough. Set it to auto and carefully get the uh, electrodes and just you can hold it also in your uh, in your hand it's it's not dangerous just be careful not too short you know you're not you don't want to really weld so you just touch it and as you can see at 20 milliseconds it already flashes if you want to go up you can go up to 40 and you will get like a kind of a better flash there If you, if you notice, I'm keeping, I'm holding the electrodes on and it doesn't uh, re-weld again. If it does do that, it means that there is a problem with your power supply. So you detach, reattach. As you can see, you connect. It shouldn't uh, light up anything. It only, let's say, flashes when it triggers. There. And uh, I'm, uh, I've had, I have it now set to 40. Um, which is, uh, let's say, with this flash, it gives you a good indication. It means that the battery is pretty powerful because uh, I tried with my power supply and I need to set it to 99 to get just a little bit of, of a flash. So this is a very good battery. So as you can see now, I set it to 10 and you can barely see the filament getting warm. You see? Now this is a, um, a 21 watt. If you have a, a, a less powerful light bulb, it will flash more because the filament, of course, is um, thinner and it will heat up quicker. So, you know, this is uh, more or less a good um, measuring device to see how your battery, you know, the condition of your battery. Now, as I said, uh, the reaction time, you see, with uh, 10 milliseconds, it's set, set to 10 it's you can barely see it so let's say that that's that's a good indicator i mean it means it's okay when you go to 20 you can see it flash so this is uh let's say indicating a healthy fats and functionality of the detection system in it's an auto mode and you can uh you know deduct that your welder is fine and that your battery should be okay of course the amount of current that this light bulb uh, the, absorbs is uh, barely you know, it's just less, it's less than two amps. It's a 20 watt uh, light bulb. So it's about 1.6 amps, 1.5 amps. So, you know, it's it's just just an indication to see that you don't have any shorts. Now, if you do contact uh, the light bulb and you see that it turns on and it stays on, your, your, uh, either your FETs are shorted or your um, driver circuit is not working correctly. So let me just unplug this. Um, that's something that you have to investigate. Uh, you will have to 
unscrew the um, top here. Do it quickly and show you. I'll just unscrew this rapidly. Okay, I'll get hold of my tester. Okay, so then you get hold of your tester, you set it in continuity mode, uh, and with the beep, what you need to check, you remove your MCU board. What you need to check is between the drain and source of the FET. Okay, so you have your FETs here, you know, and between the drain and the source, okay, the source and the drain here, you see, there is no continuity. That's, that's how it should be. It should stay open. If you do this and you get a short, one of your FETs or more than one is bad, so you're going to have to remove them and diagnose them. Uh, but you shouldn't uh, detect any continuity between this part here and this part here, right? The negative side. This should be open. Uh, another word of advice, when you power your uh, spot welder on, your electrodes should be uh, open. Never keep them shorted, because when this is powering on, the push-pull uh, driver here is not yet um, powered correctly, and the gates will conduct, these FETs will conduct temporarily, and you risk um, that uh, you can, you know, create a spark or absorb a lot of current and for nothing and you can you may risk uh, damaging something so when you power this uh, this thing on always keep it um, keep the electrodes open um, what I usually do if you noticed I keep the red electrode screwed on here and the blue one here because when you leave them one is shorter than the other and they are, are not touching easily so but that's not enough you have to usually check uh, that they're not contacting when you are you know powering it on so that's another that's another hint another thing a quick um suggestion is to i've said this again but i will say it uh, i said i said it before i'll say it again uh, give a good um deoxid deoxid dyes these pins here uh, because i noticed that they are not always well clean when you buy it and when you're moving the um, MCU board when it's powered it kind of flickers and that's not a good indication so spray some deoxid here and in, in the contacts move it up and down until it has a good contact another advice is to just short this uh, switch out because the switch is also not operating very well I don't know they're pretty cheap the con as soon as you touch the switch this thing resets at least in my uh, this is the 11 uh, BK 11 uh, 2k version and uh, I just, you know, just put a blob of solder here on the top, on the top two contacts. So this will always stay on as soon as you plug it in. Um, even it's also advisable because that way you are forced to unplug your welder. Because even if this is uh, turned off, the power is always present here, and that's not a good thing. So my advice is to always unplug the welder and forget about the switch. Um, okay, so that was basically the quick tests that I, that I came up with to check if at least your welder is functioning properly. Um, remember that the mods are necessary, so a uh, quick recap on that. Replace this diode here. I'm sorry, replace this resistor here and also the, the, the inrush, the current inrush limiter uh, resistor mod. This one, see, R4. Put a 470 ohm, 500 ohm is good also here. Replace this one. See, I have the sill screen on this on this model. It's called R4. If you don't, anyway, it's always this left bottom one to replace. You can also use a normal resistor, just solder it from here to here and re remove this one. Or put two 1K resistors in parallel. It doesn't matter. Just, you know, the value should be around 500 ohms, 470. Uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good value. That's the first obligatory mod on these models, on these revisions, plus the... Um, inrush current limiter mod you have to remove the diode turn it around 180 degrees and put in series 
uh, 20 ohm, 50 ohm, whatever resistor, 100 ohm is too much. Just just stay above 10 uh, and uh, put it in series. So this diode was connected directly to this pad here. Uh, I just switch, uh, swiveled it around 180 degrees and simply added the resistor here from the end of this diode to there. Okay, this is not its original resistor because people have said, oh, but I see this is not the M7. No, mine, of course, was broken. It was shorted and that's easy also to test. You use a, a tester and test, you know, the continuity between uh, the uh, cathode and anode of the diode. It should uh, only conduct in one, in one sense and drop uh, the 0.6 volts as a regular diode. And if it doesn't do that and it conducts in both uh, sides, then it's broken already and you need to replace it. I had this SS Schottky diode uh, removed from a power supply. <laughs> you can use pretty, pretty much any 1N 4002 diode, 403, 4567 diode, uh, even normal. You don't need an SMD one. Just arrange it so that you have this uh, diode and resistor in series with these two pads or I don't know, maybe you can find an easier... Um, if it's too um, big, uh, you can get the positive from here and, and route it through and then, you know, just the important thing is that in series with this resistor, uh, big cap here, you need um, the diode and the resistor. Okay, so these are the two, uh, let's say, mandatory modifications for the BK, the BL, the BK series here, and that's it. So that was a quick test. Grab hold of uh, one of these uh, old, let's say, style uh, light bulbs, tungsten filament. Can't use LEDs, uh, they won't conduct only in one sense and you won't really see a proper activity. The uh, leakage current of the auto trigger circuit may light the LED. Um, I don't know, uh, use a filament type. So that was my additional suggestions, I hope you uh, are welding happily and uh, there are no more big major incidents. Have a good one.